Hi guys, welcome to Counterpoints. My name is Connor, and today we're going to be breaking down Pariah Nexus Episode 3. It's another amazing entry into the Warhammer animation canon and can be watched without interruption on Warhammer TV. This episode is brought to you by Mastermind Models and Miniatures and HawkinsCoLeather.com. Mastermind Models and Miniatures is an incredible paint studio out of Huntsville, Alabama, who do amazing work. They have popular models in stock and the ability to 3D print, meaning that they can clip, build, paint, and ship beautiful models to your door. Tell them about your commission idea and tell them that we send you. They'll go over the game plan and bring your imagination to life. HawkinsCoLeather.com has a mission, and that mission is to make sure that your wallet doesn't suck. Everything these days is fake, synthetic, digital, and soulless, but not the products from Hawkins & Company. They beautifully design and hand-stitch their products in a variety of designs to match your aesthetic. I personally have the humble, traditional, but beautiful bifold, but they also make trucker and biker-style wallets to match your needs. The leather is sourced from one of America's last tanneries, and you can feel the difference. Go to HawkinsCoLeather.com and use coupon code COUNTERPOINTS for 15% off, or comment down below Hawkins and & Company, and I will pick one commenter to receive our giveaway, celebrating 50,000 subscribers. Hawkins & Company is giving away this beautiful CounterPoints-inspired wallet, an American-made pocket knife, keychain, and real gold and silver. That's right, I'm going to pay you to simply help me in the algorithm and to check out HawkinsCoLeather.com. The Deathmark Assassin is so named because his targets appear marked. Necrons command many technologies that defy human comprehension, and among them is that Deathmarks can view their targets haloed in a blinding glow, making their prey easy to target. This electronic signature is so powerful it will interfere with the scanners and electronics of nearby troops. 
The powering up of the Deathmark Synaptic Disintegrator alerts Brother Sakan to his presence, foiling the shot. The Deathmark then has to make 200-yard shots while being criticized by his boss. As I mentioned in previous episodes, Necrons can dedicate different parts of their brain to different actions, but I can't imagine arguing with a supervisor while taking bolter fire while trying to line up precision shots is easy. This is only compounded by the arrival of what I have called Mind Shackle Zombies. My presumption being that human experiment subjects, the quote-unquote detritus of Illuminor Ceres' experimentation, had nanoscarabs in their brainstem forcing them to hunt down their fellow humans. Pointed against this theory is that the Mind Shackle Zombies attack the Deathmark Assassin. A possible excuse I'll use for my theory, though, is that one, it's not particularly well explained in the series how the Mind Shackle Zombies exist, and two, maybe Illuminor Ceres believed any assassin who is foiled by a few zombies isn't worth his intervention. The Mind Wipe Zombies are dispatched brutally by the Deathmark, but they don't go down without causing some damage. All Necrons are made of living metal, known as Necrodermis. Necro meaning dead, and Dermis being skin. The Deathmark is able to use his remaining power to repair some of his systems, allowing some of his limbs, joints, and neural connections to regenerate and snap back into place. This is not enough to fix his teleportation system, and so the Assassin has to continue his hunt on foot. Using an Auspex, Brother Zakan is able to scan the area and realize it's clear. While likely confused by the sudden disappearance of the assassin, I'm sure he's grateful for the timely bolter fire by Sister Danica. The plan is to head west, with the civilians to an evacuation locus. Sister Danica is skeptical of the plan, since she hasn't seen any Imperial ships rising from that direction in days, and believes Zakan is only prolonging the lives of the wretched souls, merely trading one death for another. Aggravated by Sister Danica's pessimism, Brother Zakan states he has no more time for her hate. Sister Danica replies, Hatred is the Emperor's greatest gift to humanity. Danica is chastised by the ghost of the Cadian Guardsmen before they move out. Move. Are we close to the evacuation site, sister? Yes. Just keep moving. We are blessed, are we not? Guided by one of the God Emperor's own angels. Our world is ash, its soil and soul defiled. You speak to me of blessings, preacher. Throne of gold, are you blind as well as foolish? We have suffered much, and yet hope prevails. All is not yet lost. <laughs> Just keep walking. Defeat has embittered you, sister. I sense a soul with a shaken faith. You sense nothing. You know nothing. I know that the God Emperor forgives you, Sister Danica. For what sin do you imagine I need absolution? For this, of course. For your defeat at the hands of the alien filth. For your failure to save our world. in the darkness instead of defending our world. Dare speak to me of failure. I meant only to comfort you. My sister's blood waters the holy ground you speak of. The sacred land you didn't even try to defend. I, I am no soldier. I did all I could. You saved those four wretches, dragging them into the shadows and granting them life for another handful of hours. But how many others did you abandon to die, preacher? You do not speak for the God Emperor. You are a faithless wretch. A man whose holy robes are soiled by fear. You have no right to speak to me of faith, nor of failure. Least of all, forgiveness. The Emperor is not a forgiving God. Cutting a little close to the bone, isn't he? Be silent. Why do you hate him? Because he speaks your own fears to your face? Be silent! Because you fear he's right. Shut up! He's what his faith made him. Just like you, sister. Just like you. Hold! Give no ground! Sister, the seventh concourse is overrun. We can still fall back. Shut the road, be easy! The destination is worthless! Stand, soldier, and fight! The Astartes assault is failing. We can regroup with the 72nd Armoured and push forward in the west. Hold this holy ground! Fight in the God Emperor's 
humble zealots, when your faith is challenged, you blame others for their weakness. This world didn't fall because its people were faithless. It fell because you lost the war. Sister Danica's annoyance at the civilians great as they travel west. The priest's blind worship of Zakan, coupled with his cowardice in the conflict, causes Danica to snap. Sister Danica screams, the Emperor is not a forgiving god. This is a wildly important statement. Even during the Great Crusade, when the Emperor was trying to spread a secular, enlightened, rational imperium to unite humanity and rid it of all threats, the Emperor was an uncompromising master. The Adeptus Astartes would routinely purge alien civilizations and human worlds that resisted his rule. Unlike the Christian faith of our time, demanding that humans turn the other cheek, the Emperor instead demands that you kill his enemies in man-made hellfire. Love is and was only for those who follow him. A flashback reveals who our ghostly guardsman was, a fellow warrior who fell during Sister Danica's last battle. The guardsman tries to appeal to practicality and sound tactics, wishing to retreat from the brutal onslaught butchering their unit and to regroup with the mechanized division for a counter-assault. Unwavering in her zeal, Sister Danica commits her forces to the battle at hand and is witness to her guard brethren being slaughtered before she herself is knocked unconscious. Angel. What's wrong? We are here. But where are the ships? Where is anything? This wasn't the only evacuation, Locus. There are others. Have no fear. We'll head west and make for the city's edge. Once we're there, Danica. Stay low. Whatever happens, keep heading west. Sakan! West, no matter what, get out of the city. Into the fires of battle. Unto the anvil of war. Forgive me.
We head west. But, but what about Sakan? We have to get you to safety. <laughs> said to go west always west and may the emperor be with you come with us please not this time the emperor still has need of me i must hunt that creature down before it hunts me but you're injured your hand i hunted dragons in my youth boy a few scratches won't slow me down now Go. Stay in hiding where you can. Make for the city's edge. Tell them Sakan of the Salamanders sent you. What hubris drives you? 
that you believe you can hide from the rage of my brothers, from the fire they'll bring. <laughs> Such intriguing delusion. So be it, bioengineered anomaly. This exchange ends now. Finding the evacuation locust destroyed, Danica's shot alerts a Scorpec destroyer to human prey. Sakan bellows into the fires of battle and unto the anvil of war, the Salamander's motto. Along with being caring guardians of the Emperor's subjects, Salamanders are also renowned for being master artisans. They use the volcanic magma of their home planet Nocturne to forge weapons of incredible artistry. Sakan takes cover for a moment, dodging ballistic threats that don't appear, but the Scorpec destroyer is a melee unit, meaning every moment that bolts aren't flying in its direction, it is scuttling faster and faster across the battlefield to rip Sakan apart with its hyperphase blade. Sister Danica instantly responds to the sound of bolter fire, having spared the priest, and I love her reaction time. For all her doubt, self-hatred, and fractured consciousness, she is first and foremost a warrior. When the sound of battle rings, she runs towards the gunfire, all else forgotten. Sakan is able to use a grenade as a distraction as he rolls away from the hyperphase blade, but even with lightning fast reactions, he can't avoid losing an arm to the destroyer. Danica's timely intervention buys him a breath, and he uses that breath to swear oaths to rally his body for the fight. A combination of chainsword stabs and bolter fire brings the destroyer down before Sakan loses consciousness. Just as we feel like maybe there is some hope left, that Sister Danica is redeemed and Sakan's sacrifice is noble and worth its cost, we lose Sister Danica to the synaptic disintegrator. You can see her nerves being cooked in her face as she loses consciousness. Just as a death mark is going to deliver an execution shot, Sakan chases him off with stabs from his combat blade. Sakan knows that as much as he protects the civilians, he is as big of a liability with a death mark on his trail. Recalling his childhood hunts of dragons on Nocturne, he swears to serve the Emperor until his dying breath and asks the civilians to carry on west without him. He is successful in his hunt, and a humorous if dark exchange results. Saris asking Zakan why he persists, and Zakan asking how Saris thinks he can hide from the wrath of the Astartes. The scene is a perfect demonstration of why I love Warhammer 40k. An undead alien, ultra-intelligent and cruel, dismisses the peak of humanity as a genetic anomaly and the will that drives it as delusion. Sakan, witness to a massacred planet, brother to millions of dead warriors, and the failed protector of millions of dead civilians, promises his enemy wrath and fire to defend the remaining helpless. It is the indomitable human spirit against the tragedy and malevolence of the world. Which brings us to the final scene. Guardsmen patrolling the outskirts of the city find Actia alone, dust-covered and delirious. They have orders to kill every mind wipe zombie they find, and I'll leave the final moment of the episode unspoiled. Which brings us to the end for now. If you like my breakdowns, like, share, and subscribe. Leave a comment down below, fighting over lore and narrative interpretations, or if you can't think of anything else to say, just put comment for the comment gods. I'll salute you in real life with an Aquila. Become a Patreon or YouTube channel member, join the Discord to hang out with a bunch of Warhammer and politics nerds, and support our sponsors. I appreciate you. I'll catch you in the next one. Until the end.